Hey guys, what's up? LD Shadow Lady here, and here's how I transformed this empty jungle into a jungle temple filled with traps and secrets. First, I started by constructing a very basic shape out of stone to give me an idea for the scale of the build, and I can add all the decorative details later. Now, I didn't want explorers to just storm right up the steps of the temple, so I cleared the jungle at the entrance and started building a maze. And if you think it's hard trying to navigate a maze, try building one! This was so frustrating, and it took me an embarrassingly long time to work out how to build a maze this big, but after a lot of trial and error, the layout was complete, and it was time to build up the walls and decorate. This is the colour scheme I decided to go with, using lots of bright colours, then I just used World Edit to copy this pattern to the whole maze. Now it was looking a little bit plain and repetitive, so I added in some details, like these archways throughout the maze, I changed all the ground to a combination of red sandstone, moss and mossy cobblestone, and I also added some patches of overgrown jungle leaves. Now the maze is complete, it's time to work on the temple structure. And this is not the kind of thing I usually build, so I didn't really know what I was doing, but I had my brightly coloured blocks and I just started placing them. Until eventually I ended up with this which is still kind of ugly, so I just covered it up with loads of leaves, and here is the final result. Now it's time for the fun part, the interior of the temple. And this is going to be the entryway to the rest of the temple, but accessing the temple and its treasures within is not going to be a simple task. This is where the first challenge will be. So let's start by decorating this room, continuing the mossy theme from below. Ta-da! Now you might be wondering why there is a mysterious hole in the middle of this floor, and you will soon find out why, but first I need to finish decorating this room. I want to make it look all overgrown with vines and leaves. There! Now for my next trick, I'm going to place some golden obelisks in each corner, and upon each obelisk, a golden monkey head. Now you might have guessed that these monkey statues do have something to do with the challenge of entering the temple. I'm going to do some redstone and command blocks to make it so that when you align the monkey heads correctly, the floor will open into a huge hole which drops down into the depths of the jungle temple. So let's just go behind the scenes to work on the redstone. And for this, I have to give a huge thank you to a fellow YouTuber, AvidMC, for all the help with command blocks. I have learned so much lately from watching his videos, and when I told him about my monkey head puzzle, he showed me how to do something really cool. We can rotate these player heads by right-clicking them. So now the player can align them, and when they are in the correct position, ta-da! The ground will open up. And then this needs to go all the way down. There. Why level 30? That is quite a drop. Would you jump down there? Probably not. Let's make it look a little bit more interesting down there. We'll start by adding some texture to the walls of the hole to give them something interesting to look at while they fall. And using World Edit, we'll paint some texture on. I think the copper art actually looks really cool here, even if it is kind of useless. Okay, that looks a lot more interesting but still dangerous, so maybe we should add a big pool of water at the bottom here. Like so. And now we make it look nice. Ta-da! My underground lagoon is complete, and I've made it really overgrown with all these drip leaves and little bits of broken stone everywhere. And underwater, there's lots of drip leaf and seagrass, but it's looking a little devoid of life, so I'm going to summon some tropical fish with a very specific colour, and let's also spawn in a glow squid or two to add some sparkle. Now the lagoon is complete, but the rest of this place is looking a little bit empty, so I've been busy making the walls a little bit less square, and marking out some of the features of this room. The red archways are going to be tunnels off to different parts of the temple, and this purple area is going to be a puzzle wall of some sort, but before we work on these features, we need to finish decorating this area. And I want to continue the overgrown theme, so I'll decorate the floor with this mixture of stone and moss blocks. And then for the walls, I'm going to do a combination of red sandstone. Now this is looking a lot more like the temple on the surface, but it's very dark down here, so you know what that means. More glowberries. These are truly the magical secret to lighting up those dark ceilings. 
And you can see they're already bringing in a lot of light, but some of these vines definitely need a haircut. There, I think that looks much better now. Next, I'm going to work on this, which is going to be a statue of a monkey. So I found this monkey house build by Bitgardner and I'm going to recreate it as a statue. Ta-da! One monkey statue. I think this adds some real atmosphere to the temple, but I also want to add some parrots sitting on the leaves here. So we'll add them in with commands like so. Cute, okay, they'll just be vibing out here while I go and work on this puzzle wall over here. I really want to put loads of buttons on this part of the wall and have them all do different things. Hmm, Ugh, it doesn't really stand out very much though. It just looks a bit boring. Aha, that stands out a lot more. Now all we have to do is add some command blocks behind the buttons so that pressing each one has consequences. I want to have a mixture of good, bad, and neutral consequences so that you never know what's gonna happen if you press it. For example, this one will create a poison cloud that poisons the player until they escape. Okay, I have finished setting up all the buttons. Now let me show you what some of them do. This one spawns an evoker fang under the player, which can attack them if they don't move out of the way quick enough. Uh, this one? Spawns a skeleton! Spawns a skeleton, that one! This one up here spawns fire! Forgot about that. And this one is my favorite. It plays a music disc for the parents to dance to. That one's a real treat. Unless you hate the song Chirp. Because you cannot escape! So you just have to listen to that while you test out the rest of the buttons. Ah! And one of them opens a secret door. So let's work on decorating this empty room as a treasure room. I want to use some of these decorated pots and also flower pots because I think they would fit really well with the aesthetic of this temple. Very cool. And also, can we make fat ones like this? Honestly, kind of. <laughs> Now to light this place up, I'm gonna make some standing torches out of acacia fences, lightning rods, and on top, a candle. Now the problem is this does not provide a lot of light, but I'm in creative mode and that means I can cheat in some light. This is great. So I'll just put a seven strength light block above it and now it's as if the candle is not completely useless. Let's keep it kind of dark and moody in here though. Oh yes, that is perfect. The perfect light level. Now, I said I was gonna put some treasure in here and you're probably wondering where is all the treasure? Well, the real treasure is the books of lore we read along the way because the real treasure is knowledge. And you know what else provides knowledge? History, like pottery shards and Artisan crafting, like banner patterns, which is why I'm going to put these on the table, just waiting to be found. Ta-da! <gasps> oh no! The door has closed behind me. However will I escape now? Oh, that's right. Somewhere in this room, I've hidden a lever. But you'll probably never find it. Just kidding, it's right there. And we escape. But perhaps adventurers are looking for more than just a book to read. Maybe they want some danger. Well then, perhaps it's time to see where these tunnels will lead. Right after I build them. Ta-da! I have been tunneling around like some kind of mole rat, digging out a whole network of tunnels, but at the moment they're looking a little bit empty. So let's add some interesting features. This room is going to be lava, like so. <gasps> Ta-da! And then all we need to do is build a path for them to get across the room, somehow avoiding the lava. There, now it kind of looks like the floor has collapsed in and created this very dangerous hazard. But if you have any Minecraft skill, you should be able to make it across to the other side safely. But the danger does not stop there. Let's add a few traps to these tunnels. This trap is going to be a fireballing monkey head. So first we place a totally not suspicious monkey head on the wall here. 
And a few paces back, I'll set up this tripwire, which triggers the commands. First, we will make it play a mischievous noise. This is just the Vex charge sound effect from Vanilla Minecraft. And then I think it would be cool if we could turn the monkey's eyes red to let the player know that they have seriously messed up. Then a split second later, this command will cause a fireball to shoot out of the monkey head. Now all that's left to do is try this out. So we'll step over. And the good thing about this trap is that it is unlimited. It just resets itself and it's ready to claim its next victim. Now all we need to do to make this a little less suspicious is throw in some red herrings. We'll put some random pressure plates on the floor. They'll just think it's part of the decor. But under one of these pressure plates, I am going to hide an actual trap. So then when they step over it, a poison cloud will appear, which will poison the player. But if they can survive all of the traps, they might stumble into this room. In here, we have one large central room with a few smaller rooms off to the side. The first thing I'm going to do is close off these smaller rooms with a door, but I'm going to add in a mechanism for them to open, like so. <gasps> Let's add some sound effects. Much better. Now all we need to do is hide these around the room. And here it is, fully decorated and rigged up with redstone. Some of the levers are easier to find than others, but don't worry, I'm going to show you where I have hidden all four levers. Let's start with the most obvious. This one right here is probably the most dangerous lever because it opens the Ravager Pit. And if I was in survival mode right now, I would be dead. Let's just lock this off for now so my Ravager doesn't get loose while I show you all the other levers. This one right here opens door number two. And over here is a mystical object that is sure to entice any player. But if they aren't paying attention to their surroundings and they try to take the chalice, they will meet a nasty demise. Next lever we have is hidden over here behind all the cobwebs. And this opens the library. Here players will find an enchanting library and I've also placed some enchanted books all over the floor for them to collect. And finally, the last room we have in here is the treasure vault. And since everything inside is so valuable, I have hidden this lever in the most difficult to reach place. You might have guessed, it is at the bottom of this lava pool. Yes, they will definitely need a fire resistance potion to reach this one, as they'll have to swim below the surface to reach this lever to open the treasure vault, where they will find plenty of valuables, including ancient debris and these smithing templates, which I've placed around in invisible item frames. Now this room is complete. It's time to move through the tunnels into the next room. And this is going to be a parkour challenge. So I built up these four towers in the middle of the room and the player will have to climb their way up to the top. But there's only one way up and it will require them to parkour from tower to tower like so. And these are quite easy jumps, but each one has the potential for failure, in which case they will plummet down to the ground and possibly die. But why on earth would they even want to be up here in the first place? Well, how about all of the gold and diamonds I left lying around up here? How silly of me. Let's also put a secret area up here and this will have a netherite upgrade smithing template. Now, I think this is a little bit too easy. So down here, why don't we add some hazards? I'll just knock through these walls. And in here, I'm going to place some mob spawners. These will spawn some special skeletons with the mossy skulls on their heads. And this will certainly make the parkour a lot more difficult. But I'm gonna disguise them behind some terracotta pots. And let's also hide some treasure in here for any brave soul that dares to venture inside. They might grab themselves an enchanted bow, but personally, I would stay out of there. Now let's move on to a different part of the tunnel. Over here, we have a tunnel partially submerged in water. And that got me thinking that an entirely flooded tunnel would be a very interesting obstacle to overcome. So I'm gonna use the fill command to fill this tunnel with water. And that has flooded the tunnel all the way through, making it very difficult to pass through if you don't have water breathing. It's also really dark. So let's get some sea pickles up in here. 
Now this is actually kind of cute, but I think it's still missing a little something. And by that, I mean kelp and seagrass. There. I think that adds a little life to the tunnel. Speaking of life, we need some tropical fish in here. And for a little bit of spice, some puffer fish. Hee. <laughs> And if they can make it past all of the puffer fish without dying, they might just find this underwater room. And in here, I'm going to hide some treasures to find. But instead of just putting the treasure in a chest, let's make some chest boats and sink them underwater. Ta-da! Now that is a cool way to find treasure. And I've stashed some valuable loot inside. Oh, I just had an idea for the center of the room. I'm just gonna add a load of these terracotta pots because I think they look so cool. Thank you, Mojang, for adding these into the game. Now, we have a couple of extra rooms back here and I had a fun idea. First, I'm gonna put a drowned spawner in this one. And then over here, in this room, I'm going to add an axolotl spawner so that when players arrive, the battle begins. They can choose to ignore this or they could try and help the axolotls in their never ending fight against the drowned. And let's just leave some treasure lying around for players to collect, even some gold in front of this secret area. But if they want to access it, they'll have to find another way in so they can retrieve all of the gold, diamonds, and some netherite scraps that I've left lying around in here. But they'll have to grab it all quickly and get out of here before they drown. And to escape the jungle temple altogether, they'll have to find the secret exit, which I have cleverly disguised in this suspicious waterfall. Yes, this bubble column will take the player up and spit them back out again on the outside of the temple. I hope you guys like my jungle temple. If you have any cool ideas for traps and secrets for my next build, let me know in the comments.